Pathophysiology of Multiple Sclerosis, Wikipedia article audio. Multiple sclerosis is an inflammatory demyelinating disease of the CNS in which activated immune cells invade the central nervous system and cause inflammation, neurodegeneration, and tissue damage. The underlying cause is currently unknown. Current research in neuropathology, neuroimmunology, neurobiology, and neuroimaging, together with clinical neurology, provide support for the notion that MS is not a single disease but rather a spectrum. Pathology Meningeal tertiary lymphoid-like structures Physiology of MS MS lesion development Blood-brain barrier disruption Postmortem BBB study In vivo BBB Causes of the normal appearing tissues Old blood flow theories Endothelium theories XV CSF flow theories CSF composition KIR 4.1 and Anoctamin 2 Primary neurodegeneration theories Genetic causes MS biomarkers Molecular biomarkers in blood MicroRNA in blood as biomarkers MS types by genetics In blood vessels tissue in cerebrospinal fluid Oligoclonal bands Biomarkers in brain cells and biopsies Biomarkers by MRI and PET Biomarkers for the clinical courses Subgroups by molecular biomarkers There are three clinical phenotypes, relapsing remitting MS characterized by periods of neurological worsening following by remissions, secondary progressive MS, in which there is gradual progression of neurological dysfunction with fewer or no relapses, and primary progressive MS, in which neurological deterioration is observed from onset. Biomarkers for response to therapy Demyelination patterns Pathophysiology is a convergence of pathology with physiology. Pathology is the medical discipline that describes conditions typically observed during a disease state, whereas physiology is the biological discipline that describes processes or mechanisms operating within an organism. Referring to MS, the physiology refers to the different processes that lead to the development of the lesions and the pathology refers to the condition associated with the lesions. Multiple sclerosis can be pathologically defined as the presence of distributed glial scars in the central nervous system disseminated in time and space. The gold standard for MS diagnosis is pathological correlation, though given its limited availability, other diagnosis methods are normally used. The sclerosis that define the disease are the remainders of previous demyelinating lesions in the CNS white matter of a patient showing special characteristics, such as confluent instead of perivenous demyelination. There are two phases for how an unknown underlying condition may cause damage in MS. Multiple sclerosis differs from other idiopathic inflammatory demyelinating diseases in its confluent subpial cortical lesions. These types of lesions are the most specific finding for MS, being exclusively present in MS patients, though currently they can only be detected at autopsy. Most MS findings take place inside the white matter and lesions appear mainly in a periventricular distribution. Apart from white matter demyelination, the cortex and deep gray matter nuclei can be affected, together with diffuse injury of the NAWM. GM atrophy is independent of classical MS lesions and is associated with physical disability, fatigue, and cognitive impairment in MS. 
At least five characteristics are present in CNS tissues of MS patients, inflammation beyond classical white matter lesions, intrathecal Ig production with oligoclonal bands, an environment fostering immune cell persistence, and a disruption of the blood-brain barrier outside of active lesions. The scars that give the name to the condition are produced by astrocytes healing old lesions. MS is active even during remission periods. Follicle-like aggregates in the meninges are formed only in secondary progressive MIS and correlate with the degree of subpial cortical demyelination and brain atrophy, suggesting that they might contribute to cortical pathology in SPMS. These ectopic lymphoid follicles are composed mainly of EBV-infected B cells. In multiple sclerosis, inflammation, demyelination, and neurodegeneration are observed together. Some clinical trials have shown that the inflammation produces both the relapses and the demyelination, and that neurodegeneration is independent from inflammation, produces the accumulative disability, and advances even when inflammation and demyelination are delayed. It seems that neurodegeneration is produced by damaged mitochondria, which in turn comes from activated microglia. Currently it is unknown what the primary cause of MS is, if MS is a heterogeneous disease, the lesion development process would not be unique. In particular, some PPMS patients having a special clinical course named rapidly progressive multiple sclerosis could have a special genetic cause and a different development process. Several types of damage appear in the brain, normal appearing white matter and characteristic lesions. Changes in NAWM include axonal injury without demyelination, low-grade inflammation, and microglial and astrocytic activation. MS lesions develop inside NAWM areas. The most accepted sequence of events is first NAWM appearance, then the so-called preactive lesions, with activated microglia, and finally the BBB breakdown which enables the entry of T-cells to the CNS. This marks the beginning of an autoimmune attack which destroys myelin in active lesions. When the attack is resolved, a characteristic glial scar is formed by astrocytes. Current models can be divided into two categories, inside-out and outside-in. In the former, it is hypothesized that a problem in CNS cells produces an immune response that destroys myelin and subsequently breaks the BBB. In latter, an external factor produces BBB leaks, enters the CNS, and destroys myelin and axons. Whatever the underlying condition for MS is, it appears that damage is triggered by an unknown soluble factor in the CSF potentially produced in meningeal areas, this factor can diffuse into the cortical parenchyma and destroy myelin either directly or indirectly through microglia activation. The evolution of a preactive lesion is related to microglia reactivity. Increased expression of pro-inflammatory cell surface markers have been observed in NAWM and initial lesions corresponding to a so-called loss of homeostatic microglial equilibrium. Some authors report active lesion formation before BBB breakdown, others point to adipsin as a factor of the breakdown. MS lesions are driven mainly by T cells. It has been found recently that B cells are also involved. The blood-brain barrier is a protective barrier that denies the entrance of foreign material into the nervous system. BBB disruption is the moment in which penetration of the barrier by lymphocytes occur and has been considered one of the early problems in MS lesions. The BBB is composed of endothelial cells which line the blood vessel walls of the central nervous system. Compared to normal endothelial cells, 
the cells lining the BBB are connected by a cluten and cloten which form tight junctions in order to create a barrier to keep out larger molecules such as proteins. In order to pass through, molecules must be taken in by transport proteins or an alteration in the BBB permeability must occur such as interactions with associated adapter proteins like ZO1, ZO2, and ZO3. The BBB is compromised due to active recruitment of lymphocytes and monocytes and their migration across the barrier. Release of chemokines allow for the activation of adhesion molecules on the lymphocytes and monocytes resulting in an interaction with the endothelial cells of the BBB which then activate the expression of matrix metalloproteinases to degrade the barrier. This results in disruption of the BBB, causing an increase in barrier permeability due to the degradation of tight junctions which maintain barrier integrity. Inducing the formation of tight junctions can restore BBB integrity and reduces its permeability which can be used to reduce the damage caused by lymphocyte and monocyte migration across the barrier as restored integrity would restrict their movement. After barrier breakdown symptoms may appear, such as swelling, activation of macrophages and lymphocytes and their migration across the barrier may result in direct attacks on myelin sheaths within the central nervous system leading to the characteristic demyelination event observed in MS. After demyelination has occurred, the degraded myelin sheath components, such as myelin basic proteins and myelin oligodendrocyte glycoproteins, are then used as identifying factors to facilitate further immune activity upon myelin sheaths. Further activation of cytokines is also induced by macrophage and lymphocyte activity, promoting inflammatory activity as well continued activation of proteins such as matrix metalloproteinases, which have detrimental effect on BBB integrity. Recently it has been found that BBB damage happens even in non-enhancing lesions. MS has an important vascular component. Postmortem studies of the BBB, especially the vascular endothelium, show immunological abnormalities. Microvessels in periplaque areas co-expressed HLADR and VCAM1, some others HLADR and urokinase plasminogen activator receptor, and others HLADR and ICAM1. The damaged white matter is known as normal appearing white matter and is where lesions appear. These lesions form in NAWM before blood brain barrier breakdown. BBB can be broken centripetally or centrifugally. Several possible biochemical disruptors were proposed. Some hypotheses about how the BBB is compromised revolve around the presence of compounds in the blood that could interact with vessels only in the NAWM areas. The permeability of two cytokines, interleukin-15 and LPS, may be involved in BBB breakdown. Breakdown is responsible for monocyte infiltration and inflammation in the brain. Monocyte migration and LFA1 mediated attachment to brain microvascular endothelia is regulated by SDF1 alpha through lin kinase. Using iron nanoparticles, involvement of macrophages in BBB breakdown can be detected. A special role is played by matrix metalloproteinases. These increase BBB T cell permeability especially in the case of MMP9 and are supposedly related to the mechanism of action of interferons. Whether BBB dysfunction is the cause or the consequence of MS is disputed, because activated T-cells can cross a healthy BBB when they express adhesion proteins. Apart from that, activated T-cells can cross a healthy BBB when they express adhesion proteins. In particular, one of these adhesion proteins involved is ALCAM, 
and is under study as therapeutic target. Another protein involved is CXCL12, which is found also in brain biopsies of inflammatory elements, and which could be related to the behavior of CXCL13 under methylprednisolone therapy. Some molecular biochemical models for relapses have been proposed. Normally, gadolinium enhancement is used to show BBB disruption on MRIs. Abnormal tight junctions are present in both SPMS and PPMS. They appear in active white matter lesions and in gray matter in SPMS. They persist in inactive lesions, particularly in PPMS. A uric acid deficiency was implicated in this process. Uric acid added in physiological concentrations is therapeutic in MS by preventing BBB breakdown through inactivation of peroxynitrite. The low level of uric acid found in MS victims is manifestedly causative rather than a tissue damage consequence in the white matter lesions, but not in the gray matter lesions. Uric acid levels are lower during relapses. Some areas that appear normal under normal MRI look abnormal under special MRI, like magnetization transfer MTR MRI. These are called normal appearing white matter and normal appearing gray matter. The cause why the normal appearing areas appear in the brain is unknown, but seems clear that they appear mainly in the ventricles and that they predict the course of the disease. Given that MS lesions begin inside the NAWM areas, these areas are expected to be produced by the same underlying condition that produces the lesions, and therefore the ultimate MS underlying condition, whatever it is. Historically, several theories about how these areas appear have been presented. Venous pathology has been associated with MS for more than a century. Pathologist George Edward Rindfleisch noted in 1863 that the inflammation-associated lesions were distributed around veins. Some other authors like Tracy Putnam pointed to venous obstructions. Some authors like Franz Schelling proposed a mechanical damage procedure based on violent blood reflux. Later the focus moved to softer hemodynamic abnormalities which were showing precede changes in subcortical gray matter and in substantia nigra. However, such reports of a hemodynamic cause of MS are not universal, and possibly not even common. At this time the evidence is largely anecdotal and some MS patients have no blood flow issues. Possibly vascular problems may be an aggravating factor, like many others in MS. Indeed, the research, by demonstrating patients with no hemodynamic problems actually prove that this is not the only cause of MS. Other theories point to a possible primary endothelial dysfunction. The importance of vascular misbehavior in MS pathogenesis has also been independently confirmed by 7 Tesla MRI. It is reported that a number of studies have provided evidence of vascular occlusion in MS, which suggest the possibility of a primary vascular injury in MS lesions or at least that they are occasionally correlated. Some morphologically special medullar lesions have also been linked to venous insufficiency. It has also been pointed out that some infectious agents with positive correlation to MS especially chlamydia pneumoniae, can cause problems in veins and arteries walls. The term chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency was coined in 2008 by Paolo Zamboni, who described it in patients with multiple sclerosis. Instead of intracranial venous problems he described extracranial blockages, and he stated that the location of those obstructions seemed to influence the clinical course of the disease. According to Zamboni, 
XV had a high sensitivity and specificity differentiating healthy individuals from those with multiple sclerosis. Zamboni's results were criticized as some of his studies were not blinded and they need to be verified by further studies. As of 2010 the theory is considered at least defensible. A more detailed evidence of a correlation between the place and type of venous malformations imaged and the reported symptoms of multiple sclerosis in the same patients was published in 2010. Hemodynamic problems have been found in the blood flow of MS patients using Doppler, initially using transcranial color-coded duplex sonography, pointing to a relationship with a vascular disease called chronic cerebrospinal venous insufficiency. In 2010 there were conflicting results when evaluating the relationship between MS and XV. But it's important to note that positives have appeared among the blinded studies. Other theories focus in the possible role of cerebrospinal fluid flow impairment. This theory could be partially consistent with the previous one. Currently a small trial with eight participants has been performed. Whatever the underlying primary condition is, it is expected to be a soluble factor in the CSF, maybe an unknown cytokine or ceramide, or a combination of them. Also B-cells and microglia could be involved. It has been reported several times that CSF of some MS patients can damage myelin in culture and mice and ceramids have been recently brought into the stage. Whatever the problem is, it produces apoptosis of neurons respecting astrocytes. In 2012 it was reported that a subset of MS patients have a seropositive anti-KIR 4.1 status, which can represent up to a 47% of the MS cases, and the study has been reproduced by at least two other groups. In 2016 a similar association was reported for anti anoctamin 2 If the existence of any of these subsets of MS is confirmed, the situation would be similar to what happened for Davic disease and aquaporin-4. MS could be considered a heterogeneous condition or a new medical entity will be defined for these cases. Some authors propose a primary neurodegenerative factor. Maybe the strongest argument supporting this theory comes from the comparison with NMO. Though autoimmune demyelination is strong, axons are preserved, showing that the standard model of a primary demyelination cannot be hold. The theory of the transsynaptic degeneration is compatible with other models based in the CSF biochemistry. Others propose an oligodendrocyte stress as primary dysfunction, which activates microglia creating the NAWM areas and others propose a yet unknown intrinsic CNS trigger induces the microglial activation and clustering, which they point out could be again axonal injury or oligodendrocyte stress. Finally. Other authors point to a cortical pathology which starts in the brain external layer and progresses extending into the brain inner layers. If as expected MS is an heterogeneous disease and the lesion development process would not be unique. In particular, some PPMS patients have been found to have a special genetic variant named rapidly progressive multiple sclerosis which would behave differently from what here is explained. It is due to a mutation inside the gene NR1H3, an arginine to glutamine mutation in the position P.ARG415GLN, in an area that codifies the protein LXRA. Diagnosis of MS has always been made by clinical examination, supported by MRI or CSF tests. According with both the pure autoimmune hypothesis and the immune-mediated hypothesis, researchers expect to find biomarkers able to yield a better diagnosis, and able to predict the response to the different available treatments.
As of 2014 no biomarker with perfect correlation has been found, but some of them have shown a special behavior like IgG and IgM oligoclonal bands in the cerebrospinal fluid and autoantibodies against neurotropic viruses and the potassium channel KIR 4.1. A biomarker is a characteristic that is objectively measured and evaluated as an indicator of normal biological processes, pathogenic processes, or pharmacological responses to a therapeutic intervention. Type 0 biomarkers are those related to the course of pathogenic process and type 1 are those that show the effects of the therapeutical intervention. As of 2014, the only fully specific biomarkers found to date are four proteins in the CSF, Cretac IB, tetranectin, spark-like protein, and autotaxin T. Nevertheless, abnormal concentrations of nonspecific proteins can also help in the diagnosis, like chitinases this list has been expanded on 2016, with three CSF proteins reported specific for MS. They are the following immunoglobulins, Ig gamma 1, Ig heavy chain V3 and Ig kappa chain. Biomarkers are also important for the expected response to therapy. Currently it has been proposed the protein SLC9A9 as biomarker for the response to interferon beta. Blood serum of MS patients shows abnormalities. Endothelin-1 shows maybe the most striking discordance between patients and controls, being a 224% higher in patients than controls. Creatine and uric acid levels are lower than normal, at least in women. Ex vivo CD4 T cells isolated from the circulation show a wrong TIM-3 behavior, and relapses are associated with CD8 T cells. There is a set of differentially expressed genes between MS and healthy subjects in peripheral blood T cells from clinically active MS patients. There are also differences between acute relapses and complete remissions. Platelets are known to have abnormal high levels. MS patients are also known to be CD46 defective, and this leads to interleukin-10 deficiency being this involved in the inflammatory reactions. Levels of IL-2, IL-10, and GM-CSF are lower in MS females than normal. IL-6 is higher instead. These findings do not apply to men. This IL-10 interleukin could be related to the mechanism of action of methylprednisolone, together with CCL2. Interleukin IL-12 is also known to be associated with relapses, but this is unlikely to be related to the response to steroids. Calicrines are found in serum and are associated with secondary progressive stage. Related to this, it has been found that B1 receptors, part of the calicrine kinin system, are involved in the BBB breakdown. There is evidence of apoptosis-related molecules in blood and they are related to disease activity. B cells in CSF appear, and they correlate with early brain inflammation. There is also an overexpression of IgG-free capillite chain protein in both cis and RRMS patients, compared with control subjects together with an increased expression of an isoforms of apolipoprotein E in RRMS. Expression of some specific proteins in circulating CD4 plus T cells is a risk factor for conversion from cis to clinically defined multiple sclerosis. Recently, unique autoantibody patterns that distinguish RRMS, secondary progressive and primary progressive have been found based on up and down regulation of CNS antigens, tested by microarrays. In particular, RRMS is characterized by autoantibodies to heat shock proteins that were not observed in PPMS or SPMS. 
These antibodies patterns can be used to monitor disease progression. Finally, a promising biomarker under study is an antibody against the potassium channel protein KIR 4.1. This biomarker has been reported to be present in around a half of MS patients, but in nearly none of the controls. MicroRNA are non-coding RNA of around 22 nucleotides in length. They are present in blood and in CSF. Several studies have found specific microRNA signatures for MS. They have been proposed as biomarkers for the presence of the disease and its evolution and some of them like MIR-150 are under study, especially for those with lipid-specific oligoclonal IgM bands. Circulating MICR ORNAs have been proposed as biomarkers. There is current evidence that at least 60 circulating MRNAs would be dysregulated in MS patients' blood and profiling results are continuously emerging. Circulating MRNAs are highly stable in blood, easy to collect, and the quantification method, if standardized, can be accurate and cheap. They are putative biomarkers to diagnose MS but could also serve differentiating MS subtypes, anticipating relapses and proposing a customized treatment. Myrna has even been proposed as a primary cause of MS in its white matter damaged areas. Endothelial dysfunction has been reported in MS and could be used as biomarker via biopsia. Blood circulation is slower in MS patients and can be measured using contrast or by MRI. Interleukin 12P40 has been reported to separate RRMS and CIS from other neurological diseases. The most specific laboratory marker of MS reported to date, as of 2016, is the intrathecal MRZ reaction showing 78% sensitivity and 97% specificity. It has been known for quite some time that glutamate is present at higher levels in CSF during relapses, maybe because of the IL-17 dysregulation, and to MS patients before relapses compared to healthy subjects. This observation has been linked to the activity of the infiltrating leukocytes and activated microglia, and to the damage to the axons and to the oligodendrocytes damage supposed to be the main cleaning agents for glutamate. Also a specific MS protein has been found in CSF, chromogranin A, possibly related to axonal degeneration. It appears together with clustrin and complement C3, markers of complement-mediated inflammatory reactions. Also fibroblast growth factor minus 2 appear higher at CSF. Varicella zoster virus particles have been found in CSF of patients during relapses, but these particles are virtually absent during remissions. Plasma cells in the cerebrospinal fluid of MS patients could also be used for diagnosis, because they have been found to produce myelin-specific antibodies. As of 2011, a recently discovered myelin protein TPPP-P25, has been found in CSF of MS patients. A study found that quantification of several immune cell subsets, both in blood and CSF, showed differences between intrathecal and systemic immunity, and between CSF cell subtypes in the inflammatory and non-inflammatory groups. This showed that some patients diagnosed with PPMS shared an inflammatory profile with RRMS and SPMS, while others didn't. Other study found using a proteomic analysis of the CSF that the peak intensity of the signals corresponding to secretogranin 2 and protein 7B2 were significantly upregulated in RRMS patients compared to PRMS whereas the signals of fibrinogen and fibrinopeptide A were significantly downregulated in cis compared to PRMS patients. 
As of 2014 it is considered that the CSF signature of MS is a combination of cytokines CSF lactate has been found to correlate to disease progression. Three proteins in CSF have been found to be specific for MS. They are the following immunoglobulins, Ig gamma 1, Ig heavy chain V3 and Ig kappa chain. Other interesting byproduct of the MS attack are the neurofilaments, remainings of the neural damage and the immunoglobulin heavy chains. CSF also shows oligoclonal bands in the majority of the patients. Several studies have reported differences between patients with and without OCB with regard to clinical parameters such as age, gender, disease duration, clinical severity, and several MRI characteristics, together with a varying lesion load. CSF oligoclonal bands can be reflected in serum or not. This points to an heterogeneous origin of them. Though early theories assumed that the OCBs were somehow pathogenic autoantigens, recent research has shown that the immunoglobulins present in them are antibodies against debris, and therefore, OCBs seem to be just a secondary effect of MS. Given that OCBs are not pathogenic, their remaining importance is to demonstrate the production of intrathecal immunoglobins against debris, but this can be shown by other methods. Specially interesting are the free light chains, especially the kappa FLCS. Free kappa chains and CSF have been proposed as a marker for MS evolution. Abnormal sodium distribution has been reported in living MS brains. In the early stage RRMS patients, Sodium MRI revealed abnormally high concentrations of sodium in brainstem, cerebellum, and temporal pole. In the advanced stage RRMS patients, abnormally high sodium accumulation was widespread throughout the whole brain, including normal appearing brain tissue. It is currently unknown whether post-mortem brains are consistent with this observation. The preactive lesions are clusters of microglia driven by the HSPB5 protein, thought to be produced by stressed oligodendrocytes. The presence of HSPB5 in biopsies can be a marker for lesion development. Retinal cells are considered part of the CNS and present a characteristic thickness loss that can separate MS from NMO. Magnetic resonance and positron emission tomography are two techniques currently used in MS research. While the first one is routinely used in clinical practice, the second one is also helping to understand the nature of the disease. In MRI, some post-processing techniques have improved the image. Recently SWI adjusted magnetic resonance has given results close to 100% specificity and sensitivity respect McDonald's CDMS status and magnetization transfer MRI has shown that NAWM evolves during the disease reducing its magnetization transfer coefficient. PET is able to show the activation status of microglia which are macrophage-like cells of the CNS and whose activation is thought to be related to the development of the lesions. Microglial activation is shown using tracers for the 18 cata translocator protein like the radioligand PK11195. Currently it is possible to distinguish between the three main clinical course sussing a combination of four blood protein tests with an accuracy around 80%. Currently the best predictor for clinical multiple sclerosis is the number of T2 lesions visualized by MRI during the CIS, but it has been proposed to complement it with MRI measures of BBB permeability it is normal to evaluate diagnostic criteria against the time to conversion to definite. Differences have been found between the proteins expressed by patients and healthy subjects and between attacks and remissions. 
Using DNA microarray technology groups of molecular biomarkers can be established. For example, it is known that antilipid oligoclonal IgM bands distinguish MS patients with early aggressive course and that these patients show a favorable response to immunomodulatory treatment. It seems that FOS and MIF are candidate biomarkers of progressive neurodegeneration. Upregulated levels of SFAs were found in MS patients with hypotense lesions with progressive neurodegeneration, and also levels of MIF appeared to be higher in progressive than in non-progressing patients. Serum TNF-alpha and CCL2 seem to reflect the presence of inflammatory responses in primary progressive MS. As previously reported, there is an antibody against the potassium channel protein KIR 4.1 which is present in around a half of MS patients, but in nearly none of the controls, pointing towards an heterogeneous etiology in MS. The same happens with B cells. Response to therapy is heterogeneous in MS. Serum cytokine profiles have been proposed as biomarkers for response to beta seron and the same was proposed to MXA mRNA. Four different damage patterns have been identified in patients' brain tissues. The original report suggests that there may be several types of MS with different immune causes, and that MS may be a family of several diseases. Though originally was required a biopsy to classify the lesions of a patient, since 2012 it is possible to classify them by a blood test looking for antibodies against seven lipids, three of which are cholesterol derivatives. It is believed that they may correlate with differences in disease type and prognosis, and perhaps with different responses to treatment. In any case, Understanding lesion patterns can provide information about differences in disease between individuals and enable doctors to make more effective treatment decisions. According to one of the researchers involved in the original research two patterns showed close similarities to T-cell mediated or T-cell plus antibody mediated autoimmune encephalomyelitis, respectively. The other patterns were highly suggestive of a primary oligodendrocyte dystrophy, reminiscent of virus or toxin-induced demyelination rather than autoimmunity. The four identified patterns are These differences are noticeable only in early lesions and the heterogeneity was controversial during some time because some research groups thought that these four patterns could be consequence of the age of the lesions. Nevertheless, after some debate among research groups, the four patterns model is accepted and the exceptional case found by Prinius has been classified as NMO. For some investigation teams this means that MS is an immunopathogenetically heterogeneous disease. The latter hypothesis is further corroborated by a recent study that demonstrated significant differences in routine cerebrospinal fluid findings between patients with pattern I lesions and patients with non-pattern I lesions, including a lack of CSF-restricted oligoclonal bands, in most pattern II and III patients. Finally, some previously diagnosed with pattern 2 MS were later found to have in fact MOG IgG related encephalomyelitis, suggesting that both the current clinical radiological diagnostic criteria for MS and the histopathological criteria for MS may be insufficiently specific. This was already indicated by previous studies that found a relatively high rate of false diagnoses of MS among patients with AQP4 IgG positive neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorders or MOG encephalomyelitis. Currently antibodies to lipids and peptides in sera, detected by microarrays, can be used as markers of the pathological subtype given by brain biopsy. Other developments in this area is the finding that some lesions present mitochondrial defects that could distinguish types of lesions.